Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and this is the first tutorial in Unit 5 of the HNC and here we're going to be looking at renewable energy sources. Now before we begin looking at the specific details of different renewable energy sources, it's first important to understand the operation and the function of a generator. Now as we know, the purpose of a generator is to turn rotational mechanical energy into electric energy. So what we see on the screen here is a picture of a generator. Now in the center of the generator, we have our rotor displayed here. And the rotor is free to rotate within the stator. So everything on the outside of the rotor is known as the stator or the stator. And that comes from the word stationary, meaning that that section is fixed. Now within the rotor, we have current carrying conductors and depending on whether this machine is working as a motor or a generator that will either carry current to create movement or create current from movement as we'll see as we go through this tutorial. Now on the stator we have poles and here we have north and south poles which create magnetic fields and we can see the magnetic field lines drawn on in blue. Now each of these poles is made up of an electromagnet so let's take this pole here for example. The core of the pole will be made from a ferromagnetic material, meaning it can become magnetized. And around that, we have a coil of wire. What this means is when we pass electrical current through the coil, we generate the magnetic field. And when we remove the electrical current, we remove the electrical field. Now things are slightly different in an AC machine. And what we're going to be considering here is an AC motor and an AC generator. So if we consider an AC motor first of all, the current travelling through the cables that are wrapped around the poles is going to oscillate, meaning it's going to change direction. And it's going to change direction when connected to the UK grid at 50 hertz or 50 cycles per second. Now what that means is that the magnetic field is also going to switch 50 times every second. So travelling in one direction and then switching to travel in the other direction. Now what that's going to do in an AC motor, providing there's current traveling through our current carrying conductors, is drive the rotor. And we've looked at that in more depth in earlier tutorials in a different unit. The important thing here is when the machine's motoring, the magnetic field is driving the rotor to turn. But when the machine is generating, the magnetic field is trying to resist that motion. Now the point that we're getting to is that there's a speed where this rotor turns where this machine is neither motoring nor generating. And we'll look at how that impacts on the function of the machine in a moment. But for the purpose of this section of the video, we want to determine that speed or that synchronous speed. So we have a formula over here on the right hand side which enables us to calculate that synchronous speed. We have NS, the synchronous speed, equals 120 times the frequency, well we've already said the frequency of UK mains is 50 hertz, divided by the number of poles. And the machine that we're looking at here is a typical four pole machine. Now when we calculate that, we get a synchronous speed of 1500 RPM. So what that means is this machine that can either be a motor or a generator, if the speed is below 1500 RPM, then this machine is going to be motoring, or it's going to be a motor. And if this speed is greater than 1500 RPM, then what we have is a generator. And this principle is important for understanding a number of different ways of generating energy. The key to remember is that 1500 RPM is the synchronous speed. Speeds above 1500 RPM means we generate electricity and speeds below 1500 RPM means that we're using electricity or we're motoring. So let's look at another diagram that demonstrates this principle a little bit further. Okay, so here we have a characteristic curve for an AC machine. And what we see first of all is a point is indicated here which is labelled as the synchronous speed. Now we've just said that the synchronous speed is 1500 RPM. 
Therefore, our x-axis here, where we have speed labelled, is the speed in RPM. Now, on our y-axis, we have torque, and torque is measured in newton metres. But the important thing to note is that the power used, or the power generated, is going to follow a very similar curve to the torque. If we were to see power plotted on here, then it would very closely resemble what we see for torque. And the reason for that is because power equals torque times angular velocity. So torque times rotational speed. But just to reiterate, if the power curve was on here, we would see a peak power in a very similar place to where we see the peak torque. And at the bottom here, we would also see a negative peak. Okay, so what is this diagram actually showing? Well, left of the synchronous speed, or speeds below 1500 RPM, we can see that we're producing torque. We have a positive torque. Now, in order to produce torque, we would need to draw power. The machine's essentially motoring, as we see here. It's drawing power to create torque. But the other region of interest is at speeds above 1500 RPM. So above 1500 RPM, we're no longer producing torque we're receiving torque. So instead of using power to generate torque, we're absorbing torque to generate power. It's the same machine, it's just working in an opposing fashion. Now the last important point to discuss is the peak power in the motoring phase or the peak power in the generating phase. And what you'll notice is that this occurs at a specific RPM. Now what I want you to imagine is that we're idling at 1500 RPM, meaning there's no load on that machine. It's connected to the grid at 50 Hertz, therefore it's idling along at 1500 RPM. So here we have our shaft rotating. Now if I was to apply an opposing torque in this direction, then in effect what I'm going to be doing is slowing the motor down. And as I slow the motor down, the torque increases, as we see here moving from right to left from 1500 RPM. So the machine is working against me. I'm trying to slow the machine down and the machine's working harder and harder against me. Now the maximum torque that can be produced by the machine occurs at a specific speed. And that speed is what we call slip. And by slip, we mean slip from that 1500 RPM. For argument's sake, it might be 50 RPM below at 1450 RPM. Now, if we continue to provide a resistive torque, then the capability of the machine at lower speeds actually decreases, okay? So it becomes less able to motor or produce torque against our resistive force. Now, we're interested in energy production. So what we're looking at is the opposite side of this arrangement. So if we refer to our small diagram in the top right, we're no longer going to provide an opposing torque. OK, so we have our machine that's quite happily idling along at 1500 RPM, the synchronous speed. Now this time we're going to come along and we're going to drive that in the same direction of motion. So this time we're applying a torque that's going to essentially speed that machine up. Now in doing so, we're going to go from our synchronous speed in the centre and we're going to be moving from left to right. The torque that we're applying is trying to speed the machine up. Now the way that the machine responds is to try to counteract that and slow itself back down to 1500 RPM. It's almost like a braking motion. And it's that braking motion that's going to force electricity back into the grid. The technical details of how this happens at this stage is less important, but the important thing is, as we try to speed the generator up above 1500 RPM, it's going to force electricity back into the grid. Now once again, we can see that there's an optimal speed and it's marked on this diagram with a letter M. And at that optimal speed, we're putting in the maximum amount of torque that the machine can resist. If we were to continue speeding the machine up past that point, in effect, the machine's going to produce less torque and hence less power. So there's no benefit in us going at a speed higher than the speed labeled M. Now, once again, this is called slip. And let's say for argument's sake that our maximum power production or the maximum torque there occurs at 1550 RPM. 
Now what that means for this particular machine is that we want to spin that at 1550 RPM or as close to that as possible. If we can spin that machine at 1550 RPM, then we have the potential to produce the most electrical energy. The other advantage of this type of generator is that the electricity that we're producing is going to be at 50 Hz because the windings of our stator are also at 50 Hz. Now in the next video we're going to take this information and apply it directly to wind turbines so that we can see the optimal rotational speeds of wind turbines and how that produces what we call the rated power or the maximum power output.